Okay, here's your second hand rule. Now, what makes this so uh, confusing is that we're basically using the exact same sort of um, motion with our hand, but now we're switching fingers and thumbs to mean something different. Because what the second hand rule is for is just for uh, magnetic fields in an electromagnet, which is a solenoid. Okay, so before we just had a straight wire, which means that our magnetic field is going to curl around like that. So what if we curl the electric field? What if we curl the way that the electrons are flowing? Then what happens to our magnetic field? It comes straight, okay? So that happens in this thing. Ugh. It's called a solenoid. Now this one's pretty serious. There's lots of coils of wire here. You can make a much, much more, um, let's say not as nice solenoid, but this one's just a really nice, pretty one that's obviously uh, well made. And so then of course we, uh, if this is hooked up, this isn't hooked up to anything, then we hook both of those ends up to a power source and then we have a power going through here. And so when we have our, elect or sorry, our current going and what wrapping around and wrapping around, that actually makes a nice uniform magnetic field. The only thing is it doesn't actually make a very strong magnetic field outside of the solenoid. It really only makes a really strong magnetic field inside the solenoid. Look, you can see inside the solenoid. Okay, so it makes a really nice strong magnetic field inside the solenoid. So the problem with that is we just know field lines outside of a magnet go from north to south. Right? So if this was my North Pole, this was my South Pole, it's doing that. But what's happening inside a magnet? Well, this is the only kind of magnet that we can get inside of. So inside the magnet, it's going to be going towards the North Pole and then out and around towards the South and then towards the North Pole and then out and around. So just think of it as a continuous loop. So inside the electromagnet here, our magnet field's actually going towards the North Pole. So, of course, I have to confuse you in multiple ways with sit this situation because we're also going to use the exact same sort of thing with our first hand rule, except for now the fingers that curl are telling you which way that the current is going and the thumb is telling you which way the magnetic field is going, aka which way the north pole is. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So this solenoid here acts like a permanent magnet though when it has a per current passing through it. Like inside is a permanent magnet and it's nice and strong, okay? So outside, inside it's nice uniform, okay? Outside it's weak field, but it's still a field. There's still a magnetic field outside this, it's just weak, okay? But it's really strong inside. So this is a picture of what it looks like, but with just a bunch of iron filings, okay? And this is obviously just a few coils, not a lot of them. So you really can't see this well at all, I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully you can see a few lines here, but you probably just see a big mess here. This is what's happening, is we, of course, if this is our... If this is our North Pole here, this is our South Pole, that lines up, right? Because all our field lines outside are going from north to south. But again, what's happening inside the solenoid, it's going towards the North Pole because it's just a nice continuous loop. See that? Okay, so inside the solenoid, which is basically inside a magnet, the field lines are actually going towards the north. Now, of course, in just a regular bar magnet, that doesn't work because, well, there's no field lines inside. We don't care about that. There's nothing going inside here, right? It's just going from north to south. But then when we have something like a solenoid with a hollow center, you can have field lines going through the middle. So that's what's happening with a solenoid is we actually have uh, our field lines going inside the solenoid towards the north pole. And that's where it's strongest as well, right? It creates this nice uniform electric field and then a weaker electric field out here. I just said electric field, but I meant magnetic field, okay? So let's actually figure out how the heck we're gonna use this rule. So this is, again, uh, this is the second hand rule, but it's still using the same motion as the first hand rule, okay? But now we have our fingers coiling with the, uh, with the current and our thumb is the direction of the field, which is again, towards the north because we want the direction of the field inside the solenoid. What's going on inside the solenoid?
Okay, you guys can't see this at all. This is horrible. So I'm gonna draw this again. So this looks something like this. Okay. And so at this point, it's gonna be really important that you can kind of look at these drawings. And that's honestly the most difficult part of this is like, am I getting this right? Okay. So here's what I can tell you, is with these arrows, we can kind of tell that the current is going up and over. Way I would always do it, oh, whoops, that's wrong, it's going down. It's going up like that. I always look at one end or the other, okay? So if this is conventional current, if that's what the arrows are doing, then I'm using my right hand. So that is still gonna stay, and that's always gonna sit, stay. If we're talking about conventional current or current, we're using our right hand. If we're talking about electron flow, we're using our left. Okay, so that's just what you have to, have to, have to know. And that's going to be the same for all three of the hand rules. Yes, three, we still have one more after this. But I'm just going to, after this, let you really focus on the first and second for a little while. Okay, uh, so definitely take a pause between the first and second hand rules and the third hand rule uh, because you definitely need to master these two first. Okay, so what's happening is this current is going up and over. Okay, so just like if it was here, it'd be going up and over, so my thumb is pointing this way. But doing that on a two-dimensional surface is a lot more difficult, so you'd really have to just visualize, okay? So you're going up and you're going over, and then it's going to go behind, like that, okay? So then, of course, we see that our north uh, pole is over here. Now, a lot of people go, well, if would that work for this other way? Well, again, if this is going up and over and like that, then I drew the arrow the wrong way. Here it would be going down. So we could, could we do the other way? Well, we know it's gonna be going up and over and behind there and down like that. So my thumb is still pointing towards that same North Pole. So I would always start at one end, at the end of it, it's going up and over, and then kind of do that motion with your hand and then figure out which way is your thumb pointing. Okay, and that's how we use the second hand rule. So sometimes you'll have the direction of the current and you have to figure out the poles. Sometimes you'll have the poles and have to figure out the direction of the current. So here we go, here's your workbook. And then on page 141, you can keep working on the second hand rules. Okay, so it's all there. And then look at that, you can actually do some math with those equations that are just a bit extra. Oh, more stuff with domains, yay, okay? So uh, again, you should be finishing all those at this point, but let's just practice a few of these because I find these the most difficult just because people have a hard time visualizing. And just a few things that I wanna point out. So number seven here, I wanna go over this one. An electromagnet is constructed using soft iron core wrapped with insulated wire as shown in the diagrams. For each electromagnet, label the magnetic polarity of the iron core, so which is the north and south pole here. Draw the magnetic field lines around the electromagnet. Okay, so at first people are like, uh, how do we know we're not given anything? So this is a battery right here. Okay, this is how we draw batteries. The longer line is always the positive terminal and the shorter line is always the negative. How to remember that? Um, well, I don't know. Just remember you always want more uh, positivity in your life and less negativity. I don't know. That's how I always think of it. It's ridiculous, I know, but who cares? Because whatever helps you remember this is what's gonna happen. So. If I wanna continue using my right hand, I have to figure out which way is the positive stuff going, okay? So we know that electrons are gonna probably flow towards the positive source, okay? So our electron fl flow is going from negative to positive. Our current, which is what we use our right hand for, is going from positive all the way over to negative. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you use here. So I'm gonna look at current. Here, I'll actually draw on this in pen. I don't want to, but I'm going to, just for you guys. So I'm gonna say my current is going from positive to negative. So I'm gonna do that in blue. Okay, so blue here is going to be my current. So here it is, it's going positive. So it's gonna go this way. And then it's gonna go up here. 
and it's gonna go up and around. And then it's gonna keep going up like this, right? Up and around. It's gonna go up and around down here and up here. So that's what's happening to my conventional current. And then it's gonna come down here and go towards this negative terminal, okay? So that's what's happening with my conventional current. So if I'm using my right hand to figure out which way the polarity is going, again, it's going up and around, okay? So it's going out here, we don't care about that. Here it's going up and around into the back. Which way is my thumb pointing? Pointing to this uh, pole on the left. So that is gonna be your north pole, okay? So there we go, there's my north pole. There's my self. Now, a lot of people think, oh, well, if I use the electron flow, am I gonna get a different answer? You absolutely should not. Because remember, if we're using electron flow, we're sh we should be using our left hand. Okay, so electron flow is going to be going from the negative around to the positive terminal, okay? So now, if I'm looking at electron flow, it's gonna be going up here, like that and look at that it's going behind and up and around like that okay so it's going behind here and then it's going to be coming up here and then going down like that and it's going down here and behind here and up and down like that it's going to go up and down here and up here and behind and down like that and it's going down up behind up down like that and it's going to go down and then over here to the positive terminal because of course negative charges want to flow towards the positive terminal that's what's going on so if i look at my left hand what's happening here again it's going here it's going behind up and over and you really got to do uh some visualizing here i know it's tough i know it's really not fun but here since we see the line is uh not there and it's here right means it's disappearing behind the iron core so it's going below, behind, and like that, okay? And curling around like that. So then again, our thumb tells us which way the north pole is, and look at that! It's exactly the same thing, still north, still south here, because again, it's going up here behind because there's no line drawn there, up and around. So our thumb is still going towards the north pole. Yay, okay, so you get the same answer whether you use current or electron flow. You just need to remember that current goes from positive to negative and electron goes, flow goes from negative to positive. Okay, and that's basically what you gotta do. So I'm gonna leave the second part for you, okay? Number eight's also a really good one where it gives you the polarity, but you need to figure out which way the uh, current is or the electron flow is. Okay, so again, what you wanna know is how do you orient your battery? Either you're gonna have long line here, short line here, or long line here, short line here. So again, you can use either the current or electron flow, whichever one you wanna use, depending on what hand you wanna use. Okay, so again, here I see that my north pole is on the right here, so my thumb should be pointing to the right, and then you just see which way are your hands curling. Okay, so they're going under and over. Which way is it going under and over? This side or this side? This side, look at that. It's going under and over right there. We can see the line going behind here and then coming up and over. So that's what I'm gonna look at. So I know that my current, because I'm using my right hand, is going here behind and then it's gonna be going up and up and up and then down here and around to here. So current goes to the, to the negative terminal. So if I'm going to draw a battery here, it's gonna go to a negative terminal here. My electrons, okay, if I'm looking at my electron flow, they always go towards the positive. So my electron flow, well, I know North Pole, that's where my thumb needs to point. So it looks like my electrons are going up and over. Where is this going up and over? Not here, because it's going behind. Here, oh, here's where it goes up and over, okay? And so it's going up over, behind, up, over, behind, up, over, behind, up, over, behind, and towards here. So that's gotta be my 
positive terminal because that's obviously where the electrons are flowing to. Okay, so there we go. That is how we figure that stuff out. Uh, again, that's mostly difficult just because of the visualization. So just remember, when you see the line actually go in front, that means it's going up and over. When it doesn't go in front and it kind of disappears, it means it's going behind that iron core. Okay, and they always draw them like that, so you can always kind of see when is it going behind, when is it going in front. Okay, so please, please, please do these questions. Um, good luck with that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be going on to the third hand rule next, which is where we have to use three dimensions. So it's just like a flat palm, okay? But that's enough for your physics gang signs for now. It's, you know, with your curling fingers and straight thumbs and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, hope that makes some sense. Uh, and if it doesn't, do these questions. Bye.